In this video, we will be talking about PWM. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. It is a technique that is used to produce artificial analog signal by using digital signal. The analog signal is achieved by producing pulses and by varying the width of its pulse, the average power delivered is also changed accordingly. To easily understand that concept, let's demonstrate it using a DC motor. I have here a DC motor hooked up to ESP32 through the L298 motor driver module. In this way, the motor driver will provide supply voltage to the motor. The ESP32 will send three control signals to the motor driver. Two signals will be used for the direction of rotation, while the remaining one control signal will be used for controlling the motor. By enabling or disabling the motor driver using PWM, we can control the speed of the motor. If you are not familiar in using the L298 motor driver, be sure to check out my previous tutorial about it. I also hook up my mini oscilloscope at the PWM output pin of ESP32. In order for us to easily observe the PWM waveform. And to observe the voltage generated with respect to PWM, I hook up a multimeter across the terminal of the DC motor. This is the complete diagram of this demo circuit for your reference. Now, let's create a simple program for the demonstration. First, let's import the machine module. The PWM is a class included in machine module. Then, let's create the pins that we are going to use for controlling the motor direction of rotation. Let's call it DR1 and DR2. And let's connect it to the GPIO 21. And let's make it as an output. Let's copy this one. And set the pin to 19. Let's call it as DR2. Then let's create the pin for the PWM output. At first, create this as a regular GPIO. Let's call it EN1. Machine. That pin. I connect it to GPIO 18. And machine. That pin. That out. As an output. Then attach it to the PWM driver. To do that, we will make another object, PWM, and to attach it, let's call it machine that PWM, and we will use this EN1 object, like this. Let's save it as T. 005 for tutorial 05. Oh, I already have a name. Let's overwrite it. Save. Replace. Run current script or F5. We will be using the REPL. To start the PWM, send PWM init or initialize. Now we can query the current status of the PWM by sending PWM. And as you can see, the PWM pin is connected to GPIO 18 with a frequency of 5 kHz with a duty value of 512. To set the PWM frequency, we can change the PWM frequency by using PWM that frequency. FREQ and the frequency of our choice. Let's say 1 hertz. If we query 
the PWM status, we can see that the frequency is modified. To set the PWM duty cycle, write PWM that duty and then the value of PWM duty. Let's say 768 for 75% duty cycle. Let's send this one. PWM output is on for 75% of every pulse. In MicroPython, duty cycle is input using PWM that duty zero as zero percent duty cycle meaning the pulse is totally off as you can see in our oscilloscope and 1023 is almost 100 percent duty cycle meaning the signal is almost always on for its pulse which now you can observe in our oscilloscope. It's in the logic high. But when we input 1024 as the duty value, if we query the PWM pin, our duty value will become zero. Because 1024 will make the duty value to roll over to zero. So it means that we can input a PWM that duty value from 0 to 1023 so that when we input a PWM duty or value of 512 it will produce a 50% duty cycle and a PWM duty value of 256 will produce 25% duty cycle. And as you can see, our pulse will stay at active value or active state for 25% of the time only on its pulse. Therefore, in order to get the duty value to be written to the PWM, we can use the formula as equal to duty cycle in percent times 1024 divided by 100. Now, let's rotate the DC motor by controlling its speed using PWM. Let's add a function for the rotation. Let's say for a clockwise direction, let's call it CW. And Let's drive the DR1 and DR2, that value, to 0, while DR2 to 1, DR2 to 1. And let's create also the counterclockwise direction by copying this one. Let's call it CCW and let's make the inverse of these values. Let's also create a function to start the motor. Let's call it start with an argument of rotation because we will choose if it's counterclockwise or clockwise direction and inside let's set a frequency of PWM by calling the PWM dot init with a frequency of 1 hertz and a duty value of 512 or 50% duty cycle now let's check if the argument rotation is equal equal to clockwise then let's call the clockwise function else or l if rotation is equal equal to 
counterclockwise, let's call counterclockwise function. Now, let's save it and run current script. And let's start the motor by sending a start command, start, and with the parameter of clockwise. Send. And as you can see, our DC motor is turning counterclockwise. So, our code is opposite. So, let's stop it first. And let's modify our code. 1, 0, 0, and 1. And let's also add a stop function. Let's call it stop. And in the stop, I want to pwm.deinit or deinitialize. And I want to set the drives to be both zero. Let's save it again. And let's run. I will send a command start clockwise. And as you can see, now the motor is rotating clockwise with a, a frequency of 1 hertz and a duty cycle of 50%. If you want to speed up the motor, we can increase the duty cycle. Let's say PWM that duty. Let's send a maximum duty cycle in order for us to see the actual change in the speed of the motor. I will send. And as you can see, the motor is rotating more fast and a multimeter is also giving a higher value because if we send a PWM of 512 that is 50% currently 100% the DC value is 3.4 and as you can see in the oscilloscope pulse is always in the high state or logic high state. I will send this PWM that duty 512 value and as you can see the voltage becomes low and the rotation of the DC motor is a little slower. Now let's send a stop command our DC motor stops and let's query the value of PWM PWM and as you can see the PWM value now is only like this it's only the GPIO pin not unlike this one with a value of frequency and duty now it's only the GPIO pin because when we send the stop command, which use a PWM that deinit or deinitialize, the PWM driver is detached from the GPIO pins, which results to the pin becoming a normal GPIO. Let's try something. Let's say I will send a clockwise command first. Let's query the PWM. As of now, no frequency, no duty cycle, because we, we cannot use this one. I will use the EN object, which is also connected to GPIO 18. Let's call it EN1, that value, and let's send a logic high value. Hit enter, and as you can see, our DC motor runs. How about let's call counterclockwise function. The value of the 
PWM pins is always logic high because of the EN that value 1. Let's send EN that value 0 which will result to stopping the DC motor with EN one that value of one we are sending a logic one which is theoretically in PWM value it is equivalent to PWM value of 100% duty cycle because this one is always logic high and a value of 0 or EN that value of 0 will result to a 0% PWM duty cycle theoretically because this one is, is using a normal GPIO pins without attaching a PWM driver okay that's enough for now in the next video we will see more examples of using PWM. If you have any question regarding this tutorial, you may write your inquiry in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, please do subscribe now. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details and references such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you and have a good days ahead. See you in the next video. Bye!